I love listening to podcasts and learning something new to encourage me in my everyday, and I want to give back in the same format. I want to encourage others to be the best person they can be in their family. I want to be on the cusp of ushering in the presence of God to A, stir up dry bones of families, B, encourage families to take back their lives, re-engage their mind and spirit to being the best family relationally. And I believe the family unit is one of the greatest gifts in community. I believe there is kingdom power in families, and I believe the enemy is real and really attacks families. He has come to divide families, to kill, steal, and destroy. But God has come to give life, so we may have life for abundance. This is April. And this is Tiffany. And you're listening to the Tea of Life podcast. We hope that you enjoy listening today as we dive into this week's episode. Okay. Turning 21. Turning 21. Hey. Woo-hoo. This is going to be our celebration episode. Mm-hmm. We're turning 21 today, mm-hmm. and we want to talk about um, what it means to turn 21. April, you've done some research mm-hmm. on turning 21, so tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so when I thought about our episode, turning 21, it's like a I wanted to play on the turning 21 rite of passage, and what happened was I started to think about that in research mode. So I found one of the blogs that I came across was called Turning 21 in America. And it's by Tim Elmore, who I now realize Mm. is part of the Growing Leaders. Mm -hmm. I thought we could talk briefly on what this represents. Moving from our baby steps of podcasting to cutting teeth on some interviews and then now at age 21, we've got some knowledge under our belt to go forward into our quote unquote adulthood. He's talking about reflecting on what that means. So in African cultures, boys leave their mothers, go to the village for a few days or several days, and learn about how to thatch a roof, hunt an animal, interact with men, and use tools and weapons. That's from his blog. I said, even today, he says that Hebrew culture celebrates bar mitzvahs for boys and girls to become teens. The bottom line takeaway here is that there's a rite of passage. So when I was thinking about rites of passage, turning 21, and I was like, huh, what does that mean in America? It means... (laughs) Well, <laughs> it means you get to drink. Mm-hmm. It's now legal. You're at the right age. You can smoke, he says. Mm-hmm. And it said, and this is from his article. Sex is legal without talking to parents or checking into a hotel or renting a car. So he says all kinds of privileges become their possession. But what's missing, and this is the part that, I re- that really spoke to me, um, he says... So he's like, you know, he, the alcohol and sex. Now, those are they're to be enjoyed in proper context. Now, he's a Christian, so he, uh, like us, we believe that that you know, sex is for marriage. I got that. So they have their part in context. But when we're talking about turning twenty one um, here in America, I was like, wow, we're just known for partying. We're just known for mm-hmm. sex and alcohol. But he said, we have a right. We have a right to drink now. We have a right to have sex with whoever we want. You know, that's mm-hmm. our right. Right. Mm-hmm. That's our right. Right. And so right. he said, <laughs> right. he said, because rights without responsibility are rarely redemptive. In fact, much of the time, rights minus responsibilities simply create selfish brats. Privileges without price tags don't really help us grow up. And I was like, you're right. There's no tools that were taught. There's no, from the, where's the legacy from the dad to the son or the mom to the daughter? And that's, that's what I think I want to bring back. I mean, sure. Mm-hmm. In Christian families or, or other families, not just saying Christian families, there might be that training that your son has received or daughter has received. And you feel like, I have sent them out into the world with my best intention, and I want them to be a successful adult. But what we see most often is just, I don't know, crazy turning off the deep end. So America is known for sex and drugs. What are other countries known for? Let me tell you. <laughs> Back in knighthood days, a boy at the age of seven is taken in as a page, and that starts the process required to become a knight. So I think that's where page boy comes from. He's a boy, he's a page, page boy. Okay. So that's me. And then at age 14, he graduates, that boy graduates to squire. And there's more training and learning to take care of his equipment, you know. And then at age 21, he becomes a knight. So that's pretty cool. Oh, that's, yeah, that's awesome. Then, so this is from an article, sorry, 21 First Birthday Party Ideas. And they're talking about birthday celebrations and traditions around the world. Okay. So in the Elizabethan reign, at age 21, that was when you were blessed to get married. Okay. The UK is a tradition for the special birthday person to give a speech and thank their guests for attending the special party. And while other countries like Australia, they have a custom where they... The entire guest's family and the guests of honor give speeches after cutting a cake. They talk about how proud they are of the youth they've become. 
or becoming an adult. Mm. So this is mm-hmm. all from this article I'm going to uh, post in the show notes. Another thing in other most countries, says most countries in the world, on the 21st birthday, they give a key to the door. And the, sta- the reference is youth at the age of 21 is given a key, are given a key to lock, open the door to maturity, advising that they are now old enough to afford a house and be a senior of their household when married. So some countries hmm. give cake, a cake with a significance. You're given a, hey, you did great. I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure we'd do that, right? Mm-hmm. I don't remember. What did you do at 21? My 21st birthday, I went out with my friend Carolyn. You know my okay, friend Carolyn? Okay, yes, I know Carolyn. She had turned 21 Um, just a few months before I turned 21. And so she took me out to dinner to Scalini's, which is an Italian restaurant. Oh, yes. And um, we were looking forward to ordering wine for our meal. Of course. (laughs) Because we were 21, right? So now we can drink, right? (laughs) (laughs) Right. There's a legal It's your right. right. You have the right. (laughs) Right. You're not going to get... Right. Mm -hmm. So we are at dinner and we're actually um, ordering our dinner and the waitress is there asking us what we want to drink. And we had planned this entire day that we were going to order wine at our dinner, right? So we look at each other, panic, and we're like, I'll order it if you'll order it. No, no. Okay, are you going to? I don't know. And we literally both looked at the waitress at the same time and said, we'll have water, please. (laughs) (laughs) So I did not have wine at my dinner that night. And then we went dancing at a place called Rupert's. Okay. In Atlanta. Is it still there? Sounds familiar. Maybe it's just because you told me. I don't have any idea. I don't know. I know a lot of those places have closed down. So you had point, wine yeah. and danced. I did not have wine. Oh, I'm sorry. I was you going had water to have and wine. Dance. That's I had right. water and then I went dancing. And <clears throat> some of our friends met us there at Rupert's. And you didn't drink or do shots at that? No. Not that I remember. But I guess if I did shots, <laughs> I wouldn't remember anyway. So I, no. I like that. That was what we did. What did you do? Well, I remember at the age of 21, I was in Augusta. I don't remember much, actually. And it wasn't because of drinking. I really don't remember. Oh, like, I remember that you emailed your friend. Did she ever respond? Oh, yeah. Is she, she didn't remember. She's like, I thought you went out with the girls across the hall or from <laughs> dorm, whatever. And I was like, I don't remember. She said, I don't remember being invited. I was like, I don't remember. I, don't, I just don't remember. I mean, I remember other things. <laughs> Did I tell you one more? Yes. <laughs> yes. Sorry, no. no, no, I was trying okay. to find the notes where I was even talking about what did I say? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I was I was so fin- so focused on finishing college. That's what it was. I didn't mm. have time for that. As you were, like, winking at but, me on the other <laughs> side wink, wink. of the microphone. But truth be told, people who, you know, okay, so now that I gave you some cocktail information, um, about the nights in Australia, what you do if you're 21. I mm-hmm. thought it'd be fun to take the 20 episodes that we've done mm-hmm. and kind of reflect on those. Okay. Maybe look behind us and give a recap. Sure. What we've learned. All right. So episodes one through three would probably be like, maybe like our toddler years, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So what did we learn as toddlers from our podcast? So we had Brave, which was oh, our yeah, very yeah. first one. And then we had Your Story and My Story. That's right. Well, I guess what I learned from there is you just got to put one foot forward, mm. just like you do mm-hmm. as a walking toddler, and you just go. Right. You know, so we started brave. We just remember we sat down, we're like, we, we got to record. Let's just do this. And I had just come mm-hmm. off the retreat. So I was like, okay, well, here's something. Right. And we just shared it. And then I was like, taking that first step. Mm-hmm. I think that, yeah, I totally agree with that because that was. Brave, I think um, the title of that episode is looking back. It's very appropriate because when we were thinking about starting this podcast, we were very scared <laughs> at what to do. We didn't even know what mm-hmm. to do. We had talked about it for a couple months mm-hmm. and taken notes and made plans. And then all of a sudden, I think that we just finally got to like the end of our rope of wanting to create it. And we was just like, let's just do this. And I remember like going through my computer going, what kind of app do I have to record anything on? Because we weren't even prepared with that. And what did we find? GarageBand? We found Mm, GarageBand on my computer. And hey, I think we can do this. And hey, there's a podcast, you know, thing in GarageBand. And let's let's try that. (laughs) And so if anybody has actually listened to Brave, um, everything that I just said is going to totally come together if you listen Mm -hmm. to the episode because (laughs) it is horrible. (laughs) But it's our first one. But you know, it's like having a baby. You bring the baby home from the hospital and it's messy. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't look like you thought it was going to look. It's not perfect. Life is messy. Life is hard. Mm -hmm. And so 
I think that our first episode is like our first week or first month home from the hospital with a new baby. That's, that is very true. I like that. It's like we read all the parenting books where we tried to read as much as we could, like learning. Right. Other, like you said, we did some mm-hmm. research. Right. And then we have your story mm-hmm. where we got to talk about you. Mm-hmm. And that was pretty amazing, getting to yeah. learn about you. So we were kind of uh, taking still, a little step. Yeah, taking right? steps. A I like this. Yes. And so um, then we talked about me mm-hmm. and my story and just kind of, you know, it kind of went right, from there. And so I think that that was, that was our first three. Right. And like the introductory, yes, years. the introductory, just yes, learning bits. Like right. I said, we're cutting our teeth. We're just getting used to talking to the mm-hmm. microphone mm-hmm. and thinking, who in the world's going to listen to us? Right. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Get that. Um, I've got the list up now. I can see all our episodes. Okay, awesome. So episodes one through three would be considered our toddler years. Episodes four and five. <sighs> Oh my gosh. Oh, so this is childhood. Considered like preschool, Mm -hmm. right? (gasps) Yes. And the fact that we actually talked about starting homeschooling. Yes. (laughs) Kind of fits, I guess, right? A little bit. Yes. Okay, so I was re listening to episode four on the way to the Southeast Expo, homeschooling expo that was a couple weekends ago in July, the end Mm -hmm. of July, I think it was, because this year we're starting homeschooling. So I was re listening to that and I was like, okay, good. My. One of my takeaways, again, from episode four was the freedom to schedule school around family life and get creative in how we learn. And I remember you just talking about letting math be math. I wrote that down somewhere, and then I remembered it, and then you said it. It's like, just don't stress out so much about the day or the schedule, Mm -hmm. but take it as an opportunity to just focus on how does your child learn and what what are they interested in, and then go from there. And it was kind of nice to hear all your, like, you said, okay, when you first got up really early, that, you know, the first morning, and but you're like, mm-hmm. we made a big breakfast. And I, so I can picture that in my head. Set the Pledge of Allegiance. And- <laughs> <laughs> so that was really yeah. nice to hear and, and to get acquainted. I will listen to that one and then the other homeschooling one later we'll talk about. But so maybe go, okay, I can do this. So then our next episode, we had a conversation with a sane, which was actually our very first interview. That was the very first interview, yeah. <gasps> She's a sexual assault nurse mm. examiner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> kind of going along with the 21. What do you do when you're 21? You drink and have sex. And sometimes, so maybe you do stupid things, and she would get called in. So then we go to episodes 6 through 10. And I think that that would be probably considered <laughs> our elementary years. 6 being passion which is probably one of my favorite episodes only because we get to talk about our passion, which is the biggest reason that we do this podcast is because of our passions. That is one of my favorite episodes because I feel like it just reflects who we are a lot and what our desires are and just our love for people and just desire to like have people just operate in their passions. And that just you know, like I said in that episode, it just breaks my heart to see right. somebody who is not operating in their passion right. and who hates their job or hates their life that mm. they're living because they're not operating in their passions. and Or doing something of their passion, like to bring them right. life back. Right. Even if your job kind of is a... Right. You can't... Maybe you've got to stay with that job and maybe it you know, pays the bills or it does something... Other jobs yeah. pay the bills, too. <laughs> That's true. Maybe you're stuck there and you can't... I don't know. I was just trying to make... So that... So Passions is probably one of my favorite. And then... Because it kind of yeah. sets the tone. I mean, that's what it was kind of like, this is mm-hmm. what we're about. This is what we want to do. Mm-hmm. This is what the podcast is about, Passions. And then, sorry, going back to Jamie's number five, that's her passion. She loves to be with um, just men and women who they've been traumatized by that. That's right. their first... Uh, she's the first you know, medical person that they see often and mm-hmm. just to make them feel validated and supported and cared for. And she, she's just funny in and of herself, but Jamie just likes to bring that life to those patients and be like, you know what? I get you. You did the right thing by coming in and coming here to say, yeah. Hey, I was assaulted. And that's, you know, what you do. And if, um, but yes, so that was her passion. She loves that. She mm-hmm. didn't find that out till later on in life. And so to hear her story about things that she's right. done, how jo- her, her job trained her for that. So that was interesting. And it's really cool. Like you could totally tell that it is her passion by just sitting here and talking to her. In the same way that all the people that we've interviewed, mm-hmm. um, they all are passionate about something and that's why we have interviewed them. Mm-hmm. And so you can just tell that she is very passionate about what she does. Yes. And it was very exciting. Like you said, that was our first interview and 
Um, mm-hmm. yeah, so it was, it was just fun. It was like, like the chit chat that we talk about, you know, we want it to be, we are sitting around the table drinking their tea or water or coffee. Mostly right. it's that kind of a beverage. Right. I was going to say scotch, Mostly, but we don't really no, drink scotch. No. We don't, I don't even like scotch. I don't think I've ever I don't even that. want to know why I said that. But, um. Because it made me think of conversation with yes. Dr. Lisa Stafford Johnson. That's her whole name. Mm-hmm. And when she brought in the tea. Remember she brought, I wish I would have like I taken, know. I have pictures. I might, oh, I'm going to repost that. But yeah, she had lots of other uses for teas. Right. Like things I didn't even think about. And so she's, you know, chiropractor, um, that's her her field. But her yeah. love is people and helping them into health and wellness. And mm-hmm. I was like, yes, I want to try those. I haven't tried yeah, those. But I, I was to like, well, I want to make that tea hair gel or whatever. I, know, you know? I need to go back and listen to that episode <laughs> again and, and and get inspired again mm-hmm. to do some of the things that she was talking about, the uses for teas. Those, she had a lot of really great ideas. Yeah. And she brought, was it was awesome. so cute. She brought stuff and she shared it. You I know, know, I was like, <laughs> she took it. Yeah. You know, she brought it <laughs> yeah, and shared like, it and then she took Lisa, it back with her. Give it so. back. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, that was great. That was really fun. And I love to, to talk with her. Then we had a conversation with Tiffany from Don't Waste the Crumbs. Okay. I don't know how many people <laughs> have walked up to me and said, oh my goodness, I was about halfway into the podcast, but I realized that you're not the Tiffany that we were talking to. <laughs> no, there was another Tiffany here from Don't Waste the Crumbs, mm-hmm. and that was not me. Mm-hmm. Tiffany from Don't Waste the Crumbs, Tiffany, tell you about how to create food on a budget. Her passion is to help people eat healthy meals on a budget, how, how to help them cut grocery budgets in half. And so her website has a plethora of information and you can download ebooks and all kinds of things. She's getting ready to do in September, I believe, another grocery budget boot camp. Mm. So that is really exciting. Mm-hmm. And I was on the video to promote that. So I'm pretty excited about that. So one of the first steps she'll tell you to do is just save your receipts. So at the end of the month, you're going to like see where your groceries, what things you buy. Maybe mm-hmm. you can see what you need to cut out. Or So that's like step number one, keep your receipts. We're still in elementary years? Mm-hmm. Okay. We are still in the elementary years. So we have nine and 10. Okay. So Troy and Casey yeah. hate. That was so amazing. And our oh, conversation with stuff. them was so incredibly long that we had to make two episodes right. out of it. That was some but good stuff. It was some good stuff. And I just saw on their Facebook page where they just got back from Greece. Back from Greece, yes. Yeah, so it's been really cool like following them. It was really cool getting to know them and the episodes and hearing about their passion and for these kids and just um, restoring hope. And that was pretty amazing. Their episodes are restoring hope and rescuing kids in Africa. And so they, um, their heart is to minister to the kids. They're called spirit children. Is that right? They're called. So it's like those who have been, when they were born, maybe in real terms, they have a, a, a defect or, or a special needs or something, mm-hmm. but they don't know how to deal with it. They take the child to the witch doctor and be like, hey, um, and the witch doctor's like, oh, that's an evil spirit. Drink this potion, right. aka poison. Mm-hmm. And if it dies, it was a spirit. If it doesn't die, then it was something, or something like that. So mm-hmm. of course they're going to die. This right. potion that they make is poison. Their heart, their ministry is to rescue the children from the witch doctor, you know, to rescue or just to train the communities to be like, hey, if your child isn't developing in the milestones that they should, come to us. And and not just come and drop your kid off. It's not like an orphanage, but you have to have a caregiver or somebody that's going to take care of the kid, and they will train that person. They will help mm-hmm. get some therapies or help kind of make that connection. And right. um, So that, I think, is really exciting. So then after our elementary years, we will actually enter into our tween years. Tween right? years. Right, 11 and 12. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we know everything, right? Right. Or is that the beginning of knowing everything? everything? You know, when I was growing up, my parents used to tell me that it's what you learn after you know everything that counts. Mm. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> So episode 11, we had Rachel Noel. Oh, she shared her struggle with mental illness and the effect it had on her life and how through sorrow and pain she's experienced a new depth in her passion for music and worship. That yeah. was a pretty heavy episode too. It was. Um, I've, had, I've had quite a few people tell me that they really loved listening to that episode. I like how we intertwined her song oh, you know, in that episode. Yes. And just kind of, it just brought this new life to that mm-hmm. episode. Like here's a real person with her real struggles. And this is how she, maybe she's not so passionate about her nine to five job, right? but she's- Working her passions in the get, you know getting gigs where where she gets to play right so um and she's yeah so that's how she 
That's how she's thriving. Mm -hmm. And she know she does a lot at our church now. She's doing more some worship leading, leading a songwriting night. Mm -hmm. So she's operating in her passions, is what I'm trying she to say. Is. We'll put her song in the show notes again because yes. it's just really, really good. Hey, can I take a step backwards for a second? I just want to I don't know if we put I don't know why I'm pointing. So we said episode five was our conversation with our SANE, a sexual assault nurse examiner. Mm -hmm. That was that was Jamie. So Dr. Lisa Stafford Johnson mm -hmm. is a chiropractor. So just in case people are like, who are these people? You can go back and obviously look and listen. Tiffany's from Dose, Don't Waste the Crumbs. Troy and Casey hate. Beautiful people. Loved their family. Restoring the hope in Africa. When I was looking up information on Africa, that's when I found the missions letter that Melanie uh, had wrote. Melanie Dale uh -huh. from Lighten Up. It's a missions letter? <laughs> yeah. She, she wrote it a few years ago. It was like a blog on her blog about missions. And she was talking about, you know, here are these kids, 20s, 20, mm -hmm. you know, college age kids with their little Save Africa t-shirts on the plane going to, you know, Dig up wells and build things, whatever you do for your week in Africa. And then I just, you know, I just picture them with happy smiles, playing with the kids, their week, and then they're like taking pictures of the event and then leaving. Bye. See you later. We're going home to America. You know, oh my gosh. like, <laughs> anyhow, but her, her article is really funny. Just oh, yeah. Throwing that Love in her. There. Um, um, we really need to have her on our we do. podcast. We do. That would be pretty amazing. We need a cheesy pickup line that. to invite her to lunch. Right. So, Melanie Dale, if you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> we want you. Somebody get her to listen to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I just love to pick her brain, you know, to get to know her because she's funny. And I also have to confess And I want to have a dance off. The dance off. Yeah, I thought of about that after I watched her video. So, there it is. Throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Okay. Okay. So, 12 and 13 tweens. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Back to homeschooling. Episode 12, Cultivate Lifelong Learning Through Homeschooling. I also listened again to this one, obviously, because of this week, starting back to homeschooling. And I was thinking, we're in the beginning stages. Okay, so we started on Monday, and I, Tiffany, I got a, I got a planner. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Yes. You're shocked. I am. You didn't listen to my completely shocked. You got a my planner. My story in episode two. Episode two, I believe. <laughs> Learn about my passion for. Planners. How um, many planners do you have now? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> um, so this is a teacher lesson plan book. I mean, that was legit. Okay. Like I no, first, I tried. I okay, really let me just did try to just clarify no. that you think that all your planners are legit. <laughs> <laughs> I justify so, just all my saying. planners. Yeah. So my passion planner, which passion. Mm -hmm. See what I did there? Passion. Yeah, I see what you did. Um, I really did try to figure out how to write lessons. In between, I mean, I thought, okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. you're, you're, listen. See, I even did it. I wrote Bible, math, English, and then I was like, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's just spend six ninety nine on a teacher lesson plan book from Amazon and call it a day. And that's what I did. But yeah, so I love planning. I mean, I know we can try our best to schedule. You know, we just got to go with the flow sometimes because life is going to happen. Life is going to. Um, mm -hmm. But one of the things that I remember you guys saying was, for every year that we have been doing. Other school, non homeschooling, you Correct. kind of take that many months and kind of month. Mm -hmm. debrief. For every year, you oh, take one month yeah, off. You take one month. That's mm -hmm. what. I, so I figured I'm good. You know, right. I've got some sort of a schedule, but like we haven't even touched history and science. And mm -hmm. you know what? I'm not going to this week. How many week. days have you been in school yet? Three. Okay. And you're like freaking out because you haven't touched <laughs> history and science. <laughs> well, truth be told, back with me when you have like three <laughs> weeks left in the school year and then we'll talk. And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and Kale, we did Bible the other day and I talked about Moses and some history there. And he goes, see, we don't need the history. We talked about it in Bible. There's so your like, history. There you go. <laughs> Science, you know, we went down. Okay, so it rained the other day. Mm -hmm. And I was like, science, we're supposed to be learning about ecosystems. I was like, let's go take a walk and find worms. Let's there find things that go with the environment. So, yeah. So that was a really freeing episode um, to know how to structure mm -hmm. my time. And, and you know what? We we came back from, we take one class at Cornerstone. We came home yesterday. And I thought we could just come back. Everybody go, go to their desks. <laughs> And then let's open up our spelling because I thought, okay, spelling. And then it was like, husband burns down the kitchen. No, he didn't. He, um, so the kitchen's all by smoke. The kids are <laughs> going outside. I'm like, it's like herding cats. I'm sorry. I'm just like stuck back on the part where you said, I thought we could come home and just open up our spelling books. <laughs> yeah. I was like, take off your uniform, kids, and get your books out because we're going to go, you know, like. 
So, but it was fun. It was, and I just had to learn, okay, this is what, this Mm -hmm. is normal. This is life. This Mm -hmm. is great. This is why we chose homeschool. You know, this is, this is why. And it was great for them to get, (laughs) so wait, I got to back up. People are like, I don't care. Why are you talking about this? But so people, if you take your kids (laughs) to a school for the very first time, a new school, and you say, hey, I will see you after lunch or at one o'clock or whatever it is, I'll be here to pick you up. You, and they're new. You might want to tell them where to go. Like I was sitting in the car <laughs> and I'm like, where are my kids? <laughs> I had to go inside because I asked the car. Uh, I said, how do I do this? Said, oh, you go here and you wait, you show, you know. So, and, and anyhow, so I'm like, after a while, I'm like, why aren't they out? And then I went inside and there's, they're there like roaming around. No, but no, they were in the halls. Teachers found them, but Kale's like, yeah, I didn't know what to do. I'm like, oh yeah, I should tell them, go to this desk in the middle. Somebody will check you out. I just like left him in there. I was like, bye, (laughs) y'all. This is day two. And I'm already threatened to send Kale back to full day school. Oh, my god! One hour into it. I'm like. That's hilarious. Because it it is hard for them to transition. This Mm -hmm. is, that's their home. Yeah. So why do they have to sit down? And and I don't want it to be like, you have to fully sit down. But there's times where you just need to sit down. Mm Mm-hmm. And not lie down. And so I have to to learn to let them, I have to learn to go, okay, it's okay to lie down at this time. Mm Mm-hmm. It's okay to sit up. It's okay to bounce on this ball. We don't have regular chairs. We have a drum. <laughs> we have a, a, a drum stool and an exercise ball, and those are our chairs. That's great. Well, we used the exercise ball for a long time with um, with Eden because that was how he could concentrate. He was mm-hmm. in on the exercise ball, and as long as he was moving, he could mm-hmm. he could talk. And then we got an elliptical, and he did his spelling while he was on the elliptical. Like he just go. loved moving, and said so that's how and. That was how we did it. And there were points where we actually, I would say, okay, Eden, it's time to do your spelling. And he would literally go to the back of the couch, hang over the back of the couch and do a headstand okay. behind yeah. the couch, you know, leaning against mm-hmm. the couch. And we would do a spelling words. And, you know, he would make a hundred every time. Yeah. Now, had I made him sit down sit. at the table with me, like he couldn't mm-hmm. spell anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he would go and... Assume yeah. position in the upside down position <laughs> and behind spelling. the couch yeah. and do a spelling. And that, <laughs> yeah, and that sounds totally normal. Like I'm learning to be like, you know let what? things go. He's 11 now. Yeah. And he does his spelling at his desk. Yeah. Like he's not, that's not a forever thing. He's oh, totally fine. Like he got, he grew out of that. We just right. compromised, whatever. He's not going to go to like his first business right. appointment and all of a sudden like, Hang upside down. Hang upside down on the couch so that he can talk to the people, you know, or imagine. whatever. So, yeah. No, a presentation. My no. Eden. <laughs> totally, he's totally, what is he totally doing? fine. But it made me think, though, that this is, okay, so like you said, it's day three of our homeschool. And it, it reminds me much of the fact when you have your newborn and you have to care for it because you're all, or no, no, no. It remind, reminded me of when you had small children and yet you, you take them to the pool and they got their floaties and all that on. And you remember that moment when, they could swim by themselves and you didn't need to be in the water with them. That mm-hmm. was like how it was like, oh, this that's my goal. Like one day they will be kind of on their own to be, they don't need me to be every step of the way. So, oh, yeah. So we talked to Matt Hayes Ooh. on episode 13 about mm-hmm. um, his passion for good children's ministry. Mm-hmm. Very informative, really cool to kind of get to know him. Good to mm-hmm. sit down with him and pick his brain on a few things. Learn about some of his leadership techniques, and um, also good to get to know him on a on a personal level. Talked a little bit about food. Mm-hmm. We said we need to have him back yeah, actually I, just I for a food episode. That's true. So we need to get in touch with him and schedule that. So Matt, if you're listening right now, Matt, we're gonna schedule um, that with you. Yeah, and it was really good to hear about um, his story of his wife um, mm-hmm. receiving healing through um, Gina, eating the diet. Got, yeah, yes, through got through good diet. And that was just just really, really cool. So Matt kind of encouraged me to be like, yes, I want to build that relationship with my children. And I want to teach them and train them. I know that's our calling as as parents to train up your child in the way they will go. I I understand that. But I was reading this book, and it's challenging me to go back to the family altar. You know, have a family altar, have a devotion daily. And to make it appropriate for that age kid. It's not like, you know, if they're five and you're like, let's sit down for an eye for an hour and do a Beth Moore study. It's not like that. You know, I love Beth Moore. You know, so that's why we kind of have been focusing on taking time out, even if it's a small, like, little prayer and just something about the Bible and just reflecting on that. So it made Mm -hmm. me want to connect that. It makes me want to show, A, I am responsible for my own 
um, health and well-being and growing spiritually, and that's how it's going to reflect to my children. That that episode really encouraged me to dive back into that book, read it, and make time for my children. More time, I guess. Yeah. Episode 14, we talked about minimalism and organizing, which is mm. another passion that you and I share <laughs> and have shared for a long time. And that was pretty pretty awesome. Yes. I, I think I think that, that I need to go back and listen to that episode again too because as I like look You've around I'm thinking, that. oh my goodness, I need to like minimize again and organize and um Well it's like a when I come in here I tell you it's like a game to see what's missing. Like I'm like something is missing. Something she's gotten rid of. Like even today I was like something's missing over over here, this area you guys can't see it. And not just what's what you said, um so minimalist min <laughs> What's the word? Minimalism, Minimalism. isn't just Minimalism. organizing chaos or something like that. Is that what you said? Right. So I think I get confused with minimalism and organizing at times. And I think that's why we titled the episode that we did about because they be fraternal twins. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to put the lens, the glasses on of taking less is more, taking out stuff that you don't need. Like you said, uh, somebody. Oh, I know it was this book. Oh yeah, uh, I don't remember the name of the book, but she was like, put your clothes on. And then turn around the mirror. Remember that? She, you like got dressed. Oh, it wasn't a book. It was somebody that I knew. Christy. Oh. Of. Her oh. name was Chris, oh. Christy of Carruthers. She okay. was a stylist for the band. Oh, okay. And, and she, she was the one who said that. Right. You put on you put on an outfit and then you turn like in a mirror. You're in a mirror and you got an outfit on, but you turn your back to the mirror. And then when you turn around, what's the first thing you notice? And Yeah. You take off the first thing you see. Okay. And obviously this isn't a mirror. You're at home. You're not like at... You know the store, and you yeah. Well, no, it can be like not like, <laughs> but it's what you own. Okay, you turn around. Why is this confusing? <laughs> this was a big deal in this episode as well. Like this was funny. It was okay, hilarious. So you turn around, mm-hmm. the first thing you see, you remove it. It could be a bracelet. It could okay. be a necklace. It could first be the big gaudy see. earrings. It could be whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, it could be your belt. Whatever mm-hmm. it could, but whatever the first thing that you see, mm-hmm. you want to remove it. But why? I don't remember. Because when you walk in a room, that's the first thing that people are going to see. But why would you want to remove it? You want people to see you. (gasps) Light bulb. Okay. (laughs) Oh, okay. So, but then we also talked about applying that same technique when you came into your house. Was it you? Am I making this up? You walked into your room. I think you're right. Yeah, I forgot about that. And what's the first thing you see that you're like, eh, whatever is visually like, Annoying to you. You yes, remove that intrusive. item. Okay. Yes. Intrusive. I That's like a good word. That. I, I forgot about that. I think we did say something <gasps> about that. Okay. I like that idea. Was that the dump episode? Take a dump episode. Was that what? Take a dump episode. Yes, that was the take a dump episode. <laughs> okay. And see, I, that's what I love about podcasting with you is because it's just fun. Like we want obviously we want our listeners to engage mm-hmm. and we want them to laugh. I think if anything, you want to brighten up your day, we want to just give Mm-hmm. Some laughter. Okay, so then we had Father's Day. So we mm, interviewed Conrad and Brandon, oh, yeah. our husbands. <laughs> and that was episode 15, mm-hmm. Traits of a Good Father. That was a lot of fun, having them around the table with us here mm-hmm. in the studio. And yeah, yeah, I love that. Listening to them talk about the joys that they have as being dads and the, mm-hmm. how they listen, how they learn, excuse me, from other dads, you mm-hmm. know, that they see doing things well. Mm-hmm. And so I like that they weren't, I, my takeaway from that was, they weren't like, yeah, we got this fathering thing. But they were like, you know what? I want to honor what I see in other dads that I like doing things well. And I want to learn and I want to be with my kids and get on their level. Like Brandon was talking about, um, there was something Gabriel was into and he went and he did that thing alongside him. Instead of going, hey, Gabriel, come right. do my thing. Maybe that wasn't Gabriel's thing. He just mm-hmm. said, hey, let me enter your world. And they played games or something. It was right. just like really engaged together. And I liked that. We did have a few um, hashtag husband fails yeah. <laughs> and a few hashtag oh. dad fails. On oh, there, really? Right? Oh, yeah, we did. I thought there's more stuff. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was like, do we need to call him really quickly and tell him we're going to share? That's no, right. That was right. Yes. Check that episode yeah. out. Yeah, that was pretty that fun. Was funny. So we have... 16 and 17, mm. which oh, yeah. are Healthy Living Simplified mm-hmm. with Sue Becker. And that was when we went to Bread Becker's yes. and actually interviewed Sue. And that was 
That That's ended great. up being like a five hour process. That was great. It was so amazing was because we healing. went in and we could not stop talking mm-hmm. and we talked for like three hours. <laughs> right. I remember halfway in that three hours, I like, I had to go to the bathroom <laughs> so bad and I couldn't. And all of a sudden she said, do you want to take a break? I was like, yes, <laughs> yes, take a break. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty amazing. So we had that conversation with her and then afterwards, she we fed us. got to stay for some homemade Mexican oh, yeah. <laughs> and some of her um, juice, yes. fermented juice. And the, that was, that was, that was really amazing. cool. And I have been making my fermented juice. I I have it going all the time, and I love it. So I'll actually take that fermented juice, and I'll mix it into my kombucha that I'm making Mm -hmm. and just kind of flavor the kombucha a little bit. That's right. So good. That's right, you guys. So good. I love it. I failed on both those things. I mean, I just, I've got my Scobie Hotel sitting above the refrigerator. And I'm like, I got to get back into that. Oh, because I let it go for so long and it really mm. became acidic. But that's the mm-hmm. beauty of it is that you can just start over again. Yeah. It's very forgiving. It is. It really is. So Healthy Living Simplified really spoke to my passion as well as your passion. Mm-hmm. And we got to hear Sue's passion. Right. And we were just like, I think all three of us are just so passionate yeah. about what we were talking about that we just we just yeah, were talking forever and for just kept going and going and going and we were just pretty much exhausted afterwards. <laughs> yes, I mean, my, yeah, exactly. My takeaway or my encouragement from that was one of the things she talks about is drinking enough water. Mm-hmm. We we know that, but just hearing her healthy steps was like yes, um, and just she called it priming the pump, where you first thing you do right. is you you know when you wake up is to drink eight ounces or or more, you know, just drink Mm -hmm. some water. And I've been doing that. And I've just been like, yes, only because it's like, Sue said I should drink water in the morning. (laughs) So I'm going to drink some water. And that's, I just feel like, okay, check, I've got that. Mm -hmm. I checked it off. And then I actually did get get some gallons of water and just try to go from there. Like the summer, two summers ago, I was drinking my water and I was eating well and I felt uh, here, spoiler alert, spell great. Felt great. <laughs> but yeah. then I just tripped and fell and got off Yeah, got mm-hmm. off that plan and still feeling miserable today. Mm-hmm. But that's going to change, and that can be another podcast episode. Absolutely. But yeah, I really enjoy listening to, to Sue and um, hearing about what they do at Breadbeckers and even the ministries from that. And I've been making more bread, and again, still failing at that. But you know what? Baby steps. But I'm going to go back and try. Oh. Okay, so now we're entering into the, we think we're adults <laughs> now, right? <laughs> Episode 18 like through 20. I like that. That's okay. a very good title. Let's keep that. Okay. So 18, we got to interview the fabulous Gosh. Chantel Adams with Forever We. Mm-hmm. It was awesome talking with her. We got to learn a lot about her and her passions inside Forever We and also her passions outside Forever We. So it was just really cool getting to know her. Yeah. And she just bubbled up. Like she was so excited. Like you said, her passions, Mm -hmm. but she just, you could tell she lit up and she was engaged and she loved to share. I mean, she even said, I love to share about this. Thank you Mm -hmm. for letting me share about this. And I, I liked to be involved. That's something I can get behind is wanting to just bring hope through dolls to kids with cancer, and they can share their cancer story with others by using that doll. Right. I think this episode spoke to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I love the fact that she reads, what, five books a month? Oh my goodness, 60 books 60 a year. Books like, a year. Oh yeah, seriously, 60 oh my books God. a year. I keep thinking about that over and over again, and I have been reading this Captivate book for, <laughs> I don't, um, ever since we did this episode, right, because she and mentioned I'm like it. trying to like sit down, and and I know that I have focus issues. I, I know that. I'm not... I'm not too busy to read it. I want to. I want to say that, but I know that I just, you know, I get up in the morning and I try to read. I think mm-hmm. it's. I just have too many things right. that I want to read, and I'm like trying to. But sixty books a year, right. and you know what? When you know, she said I take it with me if I'm in the carpool line or she's waiting at the doctor. She's always has that book, and she. What I love, and I do this too, but I use a. I used to use a pencil, but now she said she uses a highlighter and she just highlights stuff in the book and then writes those that information down. Like she has maybe another book. So they have a notebook. So there's a book that she's mm-hmm. reading, highlights it, and then at the very end kind of goes through the highlights and writes those down because I kind of jogs her mind and you know right. helps her yeah, to process Yeah, so she transfers there. it to a journal. Yeah, I love that. That's so that's a idea. challenge. Yeah, I've taken that challenge. I've hi- used the highlighter mm-hmm. more. Um, I have been taking more baths though. I will say uh, that. <laughs> I may not be reading more books, but I am taking more baths. 
I, I love it. So then we went to episode 19 mm-hmm. and we got to <laughs> interview John Mays. You know, we joked about him. He joked about himself being older, you know, and talking about like, because he is a he is a grandfather. Yeah. And so it was like just talking, just the wisdom that came out of him. They talk about music and their relation to music and how you find bands and how do you get um kind of your foot in the door or who to send your tapes to. We talked about what centricity music is and does. But my takeaway there was my passion not, may not be music, but I was like, it still inspired me to write. He was talking about sometimes artists will just sit down and write like 10, 20 songs, whatever, just get something out because it helps the creative juices flowing. And the song that they might not like the most, that could be the best one. So my takeaway is just sit, be disciplined. And, and write or sit and do that. Hone your craft. So then our last episode that we have done, um, episode 20, was three easy ways to start back to school. I should have said this at the episode. I don't really say like one, two, three steps. I just, there's just three things in my mind that we share. Right. As an encouragement, how not to go cray cray in the beginning of the school year. Yeah. But, and you're three days in and you're already cray cray. And I'm cray cray. No, I am learning <laughs> how to let it go. But my my whole point in there was I think letting like finishing something well mm-hmm. so you can enter into the next thing. Like how do you, you know, right. so we summered well. I just felt good about closing that chapter of summer and then entering you know, school. So that was a point. That's awesome. I say that's awesome. Way too much Tagline, of these podcasts. You mean, oh, <laughs> I really need to get something new to say okay. besides that's awesome and okay. So those are my two things okay. that I say. Somebody give her a new much. word. So I need new words. <laughs> if you are listening and you have new words for me to replace <gasps> okay, awesome and okay, or that's awesome and okay, so Ooh. please let us know. Yes. All right. So we need to go ahead and wrap up this episode. And as we do that, we would like to... Um, Talk just a little bit about what our future li- looks like with Tea of Life. And um, what that is, is that we want to reiterate the fact that we are passionate mm-hmm. about our passions. Mm-hmm. We want to help our listeners to encourage them to seek and cultivate their passions into their everyday life. Because mm-hmm. one of the big heartbreaks that we have is the fact that we feel like there are so many people who are not operating in their passions mm-hmm. and they hate life. They hate their job. They hate where they are. They hate just everything about getting Mm -hmm. up in the morning. You know, they're just, they Mm -hmm. have no energy. They have Mm -hmm. nothing to look forward to on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And so, um, or even through the week, like you can operate in your passion throughout Mm -hmm. the week as well, Mm -hmm. um, even in your job Mm -hmm. or whatever. So that is our passion, is that we want to continue to interview others who are operating in their passion and um, encourage others to be able to do that as Mm -hmm. well. And just normal, everyday people who are not normally in the spotlight, Mm -hmm. just operating in their passions every day, loving life. And we actually want to talk to those people. Mm -hmm. And if you are one of those people that are listening to our podcast right now and would love to talk about what you are passionate about and how you cultivate your passion in your everyday life, we want to have a conversation with you. And you can be a guest on our podcast. And if you're not anywhere local to us, then... Um, we can actually Skype you in. We have the ability to do that. Mm-hmm. and um, But we would just love to have a conversation and just figure out how you are cultivating your passion in your everyday life and help encourage others that are normal people mm-hmm. living a normal life who are not in the spotlight, how they can do that as well. I think that was very well said. All right. So cool. All right. So um, this has been an awesome episode. And just kind of reflecting back on all of our previous episodes, Mm -hmm. this has been amazing. All right. It's been fun to do. And it actually energized me for our next season. Awesome. That's it for today. Tune in next time as we continue to dive into life. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. You can find us at teaoflifepodcast.com or follow us on Twitter at teaoflifecast. Until next time, in the words of Monty Python, make tea, not war. war.